Hi there, my name's Adam Fielding and today I'm going to be talking about instrument selection in Reason. So we've all been there, we've got an idea in our heads, but we're not quite sure which instruments used to get that idea down. So I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at some of the devices in Reason and which ones I would choose for any given purpose. Here's a quick taste of what we're going to be looking at today. Textures. Drums. Harps. Chopped up samples. Keys. Bass. Now, I've been using Reason since version 1, and believe me, options were much, much more limited back then. So I kind of take for granted the notion that I know which instruments use for any particular task. And as such, I thought it would be interesting to explore my own thought processes behind my instrument choices and to see if I could narrow them down to, say, eight of my own personal favorites for getting ideas down. So anyway, less of the talk talk, more of the instrument choosing. Let's go, go, go! I thought it'd be fun to flick back and forth between simple and complex ideas, as well as synthesis and sample-based material. So as such, I'm going to talk about my first choice for great sounding, pure melodic synthesized tones that are perfect for ups, and it's monotone. So you're probably thinking, monotone, that's a bass synth. It's right there on the panel. Can't you read? Um, well, first of all, yes, I can read. Thank you very much for that. Um, but don't let the description fool you. Although it is fantastic for bass sounds, I think with a few envelope and oscillator tweaks and with a little bit of delay, it's fantastic for getting ideas down quickly. And one of the things I love about it is that there's not an overabundance of choice on the front panel there. You're not going to get bogged down in sound design land. You're just going to get an idea going. So with a few uh, oscillator tweaks, namely to the octave and oscillator mix and type controls, as well as adjusting the amplifier envelope section so that you've got this nice short envelope, you can end up with something that sounds a bit like this. And I love the sound of the filter on monotone as well. Really nice and squelchy. So it's not the most complex idea in the world, but it's a good place to start in terms of just getting an idea down. And that's kind of the key thing here. You can't get bogged down with sound design with this instrument. And in my opinion, it always just sounds great. So naturally, like I said, it does sound great as a bass instrument as well. Secondly, let's uh, let's go in the opposite direction. Let's say you want something textural, um, a nice mix filler, then you've got a sample that you want to work into the mix, or or not. You just want to have a have a have a look around and see what works. In either case, let me suggest grain. Now, grain is a wonderful idea generator. Here, I've opened a sample from the factory sound bank called Octave Hall, and that sounds like this. So that's cool, that's a good start. That's There's plenty of movement there. So just by dragging that into grain and playing with a couple of options in the oscillator section, you can end up with a pad that sounds a bit like this. So it's just this kind of juddery, sort of atmospheric textural thing going on. Um, I've got a bit of delay and reverb on there, so let's really crank up the reverb to kind of smooth out some of that judderiness there. And of course you can adjust the speed and jitter controls if you want it to, to be a bit more busy. Or straightforward. So let's go back in the direction of simple synths to get ideas going. And here's one of my personal heroes, Subtractor. Now, I think Subtractor is fantastic for ideas and keys that cut through a mix. It's got this really kind of sort of harsh high-end sheen to it that I think is really good for just kind of cutting through. Um, I've got a little idea here, which I very quickly knocked together and with a little bit of reverb courtesy of the RV7000. And that sounds like this. So 
so it's not going to win any prizes for things like analog warmth or anything like that but it's got this really i'd say almost kind of brittle high end that kind of, that weirdly helps it cut through a mix and by using the fm section with the two oscillators here i've managed to create this really sort of harsh sound so this is all well and good but you want to sort of develop your idea further or just get things going you don't want to get too bogged down in the world of sound design but you want a bit of flexibility to kind of to sort of mess around with your ideas and create something that's that's your own in that instance i'd highly recommend using mimic so mimic is wonderful for exploring both factory bank sound bank samples and your own samples and creating something new from them so here i've just loaded a factory sound bank patch called space Sither which comprises two elements. You've got the main key element, which I've replaced with my own sample, and the second element, which is this thumb pluck. So by replacing the sample and using the advanced stretch algorithm, I've taken this normal, quite sort of short sample and stretched it out into something almost beyond recognition. And that's one of the wonderful things about using Mimic or any other sampler really to get an idea going is that you've already got a really good starting point if you're just throwing a sample into it and it's great for exploration because you can explore samples in the factory sound bank or your own personal library and just see what pops out so in this instance by using this preset and replacing one of the samples and stretching it out a bit i've created this kind of plucky key sound So the interesting thing about this is there's no reverb effect on that particular sound. It's all baked into the sample, which itself was quite was quite short originally. But by just stretching it using the advanced stretch algorithm, it creates this really big sort of enveloping tail, which is which is fantastic. So like I said, you've got a really solid starting point by using any patch with Mimic, really. And then just by tweaking it and stretching it out, you can create a sound that suits whatever you're working on or, or might get ideas going. So this is cool. We've got a nice idea going already. We've got a few elements in the mix already. So for mix-friendly synths, um, and I'm kind of surprised it's taken me this long to get round to it, I'd like to talk about Thor. So Thor is one of those old faithful devices that I always turn to if I just need an interesting element in a mix that isn't going to completely overwhelm everything. It's one of those good synths that's great for both bread and butter and character sounds. But it's, it doesn't sort of overwhelm a mix unless you go nuts with the effects. But that's kind of on you, really. Um, and I think it's just it's just a wonderful sounding synth. So here I'm using one of the bass patches from the excellent Tom Pritchard sound design Vast Refill. And I'll include a link for that in the description below. And I mean, it's it's just great. So, so I'm just using one of the presets from this refill and it sounds like this. So it's just a nice, simple pedal bass sound. And I was incredibly fortunate to test Thor back in 2007 before the release of Reason 4. And it kind of blew me away when I first started using it. It's the ultimate semi-modular synth distilled into Reason's welcoming environment, in my opinion. And to be honest, I can't really do the synth justice in, in this amount of time. But again, I'm going to use this opportunity to say, if you haven't already, download Tom Pritchard's outstanding selection of refills. I'll include a link in the description. It's instant inspiration and it's just great for dropping into a mix to, to sort of develop ideas further. So, so far, we haven't actually talked about drums, which I think is kind of an important part of a lot of music. Um, so there's so many options you can choose from for getting drums down in Reason. There's the Oomph series, which is excellent. There's Kong, which is great if you want to design your own drum sounds. But I always find myself turning back to redrum or redrum however you want to pronounce it everyone's entitled to be wrong <laughs> to be honest i'm still not entirely sure how you're supposed to pronounce it um, but i call it redrum so here i've just loaded up a kick sample a snare sample a little percussive click and a hat and i've paired that with beatmap which is wonderful for getting ideas started so just those four samples combined no additional processing and fed through beatmap sounds like this. So it's a little bit of a shuffle just to give it a bit of a bit of a groove. And of course you can adjust the densities. So there we go, a nice little drum pattern ready to go. So say you've got this idea going or you want to get something started and you're thinking 
I'd like to add something textural, but with more of a melodic twist. Um, grain was very useful earlier on for sort of creating that sort of mix filling kind of pad, but you want something a bit more, more sort of melodic, like I said, and atmospheric. So Europa would be my absolute top pick for sort of anything like that, really. It's really good for sort of more complex key sounds, bass, pads, textures. What I'm using here is a patch called Into Eternity, which is one of the factory sound bank patches. And I'm just letting that play. So here's how that sounds. Um, if I want a rich key type sound or a huge pad, I reach for Europa. It's just got this really wonderful flavor. It's wonderful with sounds that gradually shift over time thanks to its clear interface and multitude of envelopes and LFOs. So this is all well and good. We've got all these nice sounds going. We've got textures, we've got drums, we've got arps, we've got keys. Um, but it'd be nice to add something sort of rhythmic with a bit of a melodic element to it. So weirdly, my suggestion for those kinds of sounds would be the NN19 or the NUNA19 as it's sometimes known. So you might be thinking that's a weird choice. So what I've done here is I've taken a sound from the Reason Factory Sound Bank, which is called Lo-Fi Chords. It sounds like this. So one of the things I really like about the NN19 and why I've used it for this particular purpose is that it's really easy to change where the sample start is every time the sample's triggered. So what I've done is I've paired it up with a matrix device and I've set the velocity to affect the sample start value by 51 here. So every time a note is triggered, the velocity of the note will affect where the sample starts. So by just making that one simple change and programming this simple matrix pattern, we end up with something that sounds like this. And then you can adjust the sample start further. So it's just great for getting those sort of little bouncy ideas going. So it's great if you've already got an idea that you just want to add that little sort of extra, extra little bit of flavor to, or if you just want something to get an idea going. It's a fantastic, straightforward place to sort of just, just play around with. So now you've got a bit of a taste for sort of what which devices I would use for particular instances for things like textures, drums, arps, chopped up samples, keys, basses, both synths and samplers. But you may have noticed that all of these individual elements actually fit together. So here's what they all sound like when played together. there we go a nice little bouncy idea so i hope you've enjoyed letting me show you which devices i would choose for particular uses and reason and i hope it helps you get some ideas down yourself so there we have it i hope some of these instrument suggestions have helped you out and now that you've got an idea of what i use for certain elements what do you use uh, let me know which instruments you use in any given situation in the comments. I'd love to know what you're doing. Um, anyway, we've all got places to be, so I'll bid you all farewell for now. Thank you so much for watching and happy noise making. Cheers.